Hi, in this video, we're going to explore the complex roots of unity. In order to understand some of the concepts we're going to be talking about, it's probably best that you're familiar with complex numbers, perhaps their polar form representation, and you should know a specific theorem about complex numbers called de Moivre's theorem. I think that's how you say it, please correct me if I'm wrong. There are many proofs of this theorem available online. Most of them are by induction. You should also know up to a pre-calculus level of mathematics. That's not necessary, but it would be a huge help if you, if you do have you know, a pre-calculus level of knowledge of mathematics. So, roots of unity. We're going to open with a question. Suppose I ask you what the third root of unity is, of 1. In case you didn't know, unity is 1. So, if I asked you what the third root of unity is, well, I know what I would have said. If I didn't know about the complex roots of unity, I would have easily just said 1. And for the fourth root, I would have said, well, that's 1 as well. And for the fifth root, I would have said, well, that's 1 as well. Why do you keep asking me these questions? So, in this video, we're actually going to discover that there are more roots of 1 th than just 1. So, what we're going to do is we're going to expand that question of what's the 3rd, 4th, 5th, uh, what's the nth root of unity. We're going to expand it to the field of complex numbers. So, what we're going to try to do is, we're going to try to essentially solve this equation. z to the power n minus 1 equals 0. Or z to the n equals 1. Solve for z. And z, we're expanding this, so we're not just thinking about real numbers, we're allowing z to be any complex number. So, how do we solve this? How, how do we solve this problem? We can write z in this form. Okay, we can write z in this form. This is just standard form for a complex number. It just means, well, if z is a complex number here, it has a length r, creates an angle theta with the origin, then its, it's x component, if you will, is r cosine theta, and its y component is r sine theta, and so, you know, as a complex number, it's x plus i y, which is just r cosine theta plus i r sine theta. We can just factor the r out, as we've done here. So, let's continue. So, suppose z is a complex number, r into cosine theta plus i sine theta. The first thing we notice is the length of z, well, we just discussed that, that's just r. The length of z is r. And we're saying, let's say z is a solution to this equation, hence z is the nth root of unity for 1. In that case, we can, we can take z to the power n, that's r to the power n, into cosine theta plus i sine theta to the power n. We're going to need to use a theorem called de Moivre's theorem, which we will not prove in this video. All it really says is, if we have a complex number, cosine theta plus i sine theta, which is of length 1, and we raise it to the power n, then this is the same thing as cosine n theta plus i sine n theta. So we're going to have to take that for granted in this video. We don't really have time to prove it. So given that that's true, how can we uh, rewrite z to the power n. Well, we can just directly apply de Moivre's theorem. So z to the power n is r into n into cosine n theta plus i sine n theta. And we want this to equal 1, right? Because we can rewrite this as z to the power n equals 1. So we want z to the power n to equal 1. Okay? So that's 1. Well, 1 is really the same thing as cosine of 2 pi into, well, any integer plus i sine 2 pi into any integer. Um, you can check why this is always 1. Uh, this, is, this is how you write 1 in complex form. Uh, the reason why is, is basically because, suppose this is the complex plane. This is the real line, this is the imaginary line, and, co and 1 is over here. Right, so what angle does one create with uh, with the x-axis? Well, it creates uh, two pi, or it creates, oops, or it creates uh, two turns. It creates four pi, or it creates three turns, six pi. So in general, it creates two pi to the power k of an angle uh, with the x-axis. Um, so hopefully, hopefully that makes sense. Now, if this is the case, for first of all, one also has a uh, well a length of one. So the length of z to the n should also be one, and uh, you know r to the n is is the length of z to the n because uh, well the modulus of this part the, the length of cosine n theta plus i sine n theta. 
uh, we know by the Pythagorean identity uh, is just one. Well, we know cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta is one for all theta. So if we just uh, use the Pythagorean identity, we know this part's one, and so r to the n has to be one. And you know, we said r is, is some real number. It's the length of a complex number. So r is, in fact, one. So we, we can actually just ignore r uh, altogether. So we can now just compare uh, the argument of, uh, change color, the argument of this complex number and the argument of this complex number. Argument meaning, meaning angle it creates with the x-axis. So we have n theta has to be 2 pi times k, where k is just some integer. Uh, by the way, k can also be negative. Uh, the reason why is because if we, if we consider a negative, uh, negative 2 pi, well, cosine is a special function. Um, I'll show you why. If we, if we quickly plot cosine, well, excuse the terrible graph. If we plot cosine, we see it's symmetric about either side of the, uh, of the origin. And so even for negative angles, cosine retains the same value. Uh, in which case, negative turns well, cosine of negative angles is the same thing as cosine of positive angles. And we know that sine of uh, a negative, negative 2 pi, well, well, we know for sine of any multiple of pi is, is definitely 0, right? So we, we don't have to worry about k being uh, negative. k can be negative. Uh, k could be positive. It, could, it just has to be an integer because we have to go whole turns, okay? So n theta is equal to 2 pi k. So theta is equal to 2 pi k over n. Now we want theta to lie within um, w within within the first uh, first rotation, if you will. Uh, what I mean by that is theta should have these bounds. It should be uh, less than or equal to, to two pi and greater than zero. We don't want things like theta equals five pi or six pi. Uh, we we want values of theta for which for which uh, z is still within the within the first uh, turn. Okay, because because uh, if if theta is 4 pi, then that's really the same thing as theta being 2 pi, or 6 pi for that matter. So we just constrain theta uh, within, uh, within bounds of 0 and 2 pi radians. Okay, so let, let's give it these constra constraints and see what values of k uh, we, can, we can pick from. All right, so what I've done here is I've just given uh, theta uh, bounds. It's greater than 0 radians, and it's less than or equal to 2 pi radians. We, we want theta to be within within the first rotation. Otherwise, we're just going to get repeats of the, of the same complex number. So that means 2 pi k over n, which is what theta is, we just showed that earlier, uh, is within the same bounds. Uh, we can divide everything um, by 2 pi. And we get k over n is less than or equal to 1, greater than 0. And we get k is less than or equal to n greater than 0. But remember, k is an integer, in which case k can only take on uh, these values. It can only be 1, 2, 1, 2 all the way to n. So k can take on n values, in which case theta can take on n values. And so actually there are n solutions, n distinct solutions that all lie within the, the first rotation um, of, uh, of, of z to the power n minus 1 equals 0. So the next time someone asks you what what the fifth or sixth root of unity is, you can say, well, which solution do you want? There, there are five or six solutions. All right. Thank you for watching.